Hey everyone, welcome back to Print and Play. Today I'll be showing you how you can read and write from a microSD card using a Raspberry Pi Pico. For this demonstration, you're going to need your Pico, a breadboard, a card reader. In this case, I'm using a microSD card reader, jumper wires to connect everything, and an SD card that you can read and write from. When selecting your card, it's important to remember not to go too big. Most full-size SD card readers will only support one or two gigabytes, while most micro SD card readers cap out at about 16 gigs. Next, we'll be wiring everything according to this diagram. So we'll start off with installing our card reader into the breadboard. Then we'll wire up starting on the right pin is the CS or cable select pin, and that's going into GP13. Next to that is the SCK pin, and that connects to GP10. Then we have the MOSI pin, which connects to GP11. The MISO pin, which of course connects to pin 12. VCC will come from the five volts on the Pico. And finally, ground can come from any of the ground pins. Finally, we'll go ahead and install our card into the card reader. And with the card installed and our wiring done, we can go ahead and jump into software and start reading and writing. Now, if your Pico isn't currently running CircuitPython, we're going to go ahead and change that. So press and hold the boot select button, and then plug in your USB cable. Next, we'll drag and drop the CircuitPython UF2 file linked in the description below onto the Pico, and then we'll allow it to restart using CircuitPython. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and open up the lib folder on the Pico, and we're going to browse through the Adafruit CircuitPython library bundle to find a couple of the libraries we need. So the ones we're looking for are the Adafruit underscore bus underscore device, and we'll copy that to the lib folder on the Pico. We also need Adafruit underscore register. And finally, we need Adafruit underscore SD card dot MPY. With our libraries installed, we now have everything we need to be able to access an SD card. And here is the code that will allow us to do just that. So the first thing we do is import the libraries that are required, and I'm also importing the microcontroller library. This will allow us to access the temperature sensor on the Pico, which will allow us to do some logging. We define a cable select pin. This allows the Pico to tell the card that, hey, I'm currently talking to you. We define the SPI bus, which is how data is transferred back and forth from the card. We create an SD card object, and then we create a file system object and mount the file system from the SD card. From there, reading and writing to the card is pretty simple. So we have the ability to write, we have the ability to append, and we have the ability to read. Writing will create a new file, appending will add on to an existing file, and read, of course, will allow you to read data back in. So this code is going to write a first line, append a second line, then read back in what was just written. And then finally, we open up a temp history and we start writing every five seconds the current temperature of the CPU. So let's go ahead and execute this now. And we can see that it has read in first line and second line and the code is still running because every five seconds it's currently writing out the temperature history. If we then stop the code and unplug our Pico, we can then take the micro SD card, plug it into a card reader, connect it to our computer, and see that the temp history is in fact there. We have five readings. And it's just that easy to read and write from an SD card. This is going to be super useful if you're building things with sensors that you want to be standalone. You'll be able to log stuff locally and then take a look at what it did after the fact. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at connecting an SD card reader to a Pico. If you did, make sure to check out some of my other Pico videos. I'm sure you'll find something you like. If you have something else you want me to take a look at in the future, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay creative.